Starline TV. Power to transform lives. You go into one relationship, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. There's certainly a reason it didn't work why out. it didn't work out. Maybe the relationship was abusive or something. Mm -hmm. How come the people get or enter into a second relationship, the relationship is also abusive. Very good. They enter into a third relationship. Same. What can you do so that you don't enter into such absolutely. relationships again? Marita, absolute great question. See, this is the other thing. When somebody gets into a relationship and they get out mm -hmm. and they are going into another, mm -hmm. if they are not careful, mm -hmm. what they do is that they go all in and then they feel like if this doesn't work, I have failed. Mm. So they overextend themselves. Mm. Now, as humans, naturally, we want to do the least work mm. and get the most reward. Mm. So if I'm in a relationship mm. and I find that my partner is doing everything for me, mm. do you think I would like to do anything? No. no. So that's where the manipulation usually works. Mm. It starts. Now, when I'm doing therapy to help people move away, mm. one of the things I work on aggressively is self-worth. Okay. To know your value okay. before you get into any other relationship. Okay. Because it's your self-worth okay. that makes you set boundaries okay. and tell people, no, this one won't fly. Okay. But for a lot of people, the self-worth from an abuse, your self-worth has been depleted. Okay. So before you even go into another, you don't even feel like you are worthy. So you are even feeling that maybe the person who is being accepting you is doing you a favor. favor. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go into any relationship with that kind of mindset, sadly, you become abusable. I'm using my words like uh, technically, but mm. you, you are, you are, it's like, um, I, I'm looking for a word that will mm. capture the essence. Mm. But it's a vulnerable to abuse. You, are, you, are, you, are, you, you look abusable. You, mm. you give off the energy of somebody who can be abused and nothing else will, wow. will happen. So the person may not be an abuser, but as it starts, because they are hearing that or they are seeing that uh, this person I can walk over them with simple things. For example, I dress up, you say, I don't like this, then you go and change. This has done this, you do it. This is Just because you want to please this person not to make the because mistakes. Because you, 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 you also want to hold on to the relationship. Mm. You are afraid that if this one goes away, that's it for you. You are trying to avoid the pain of the first relationship, but you don't recognize that there are specific behaviors that push the relationship to where it is. Mm. So what makes it more likely for someone in an abusive relationship to go into another and be abused is the lack of self-worth or the self-worth that is lost or getting into a relationship too early after going through a process. Now, there are people who've been married, have children, two separate people, and then they come that they want to come together. And the first thing I do is to delve into their past. And I say, is your partner aware of these factors? Are you aware of these factors? Because those factors can influence the current relationship you are getting into. Mm. And so understanding the dynamics of how that can happen mm. now becomes a protection mm. for everybody. Mm. So I would say it's, it's self-worth issues. Wow. Yes. Normally, from where we sit, we would say it's spiritual. Yes. Maybe spiritually. You are attracted to such people. Yeah. You are attracted to abusive last week people. Last we had a question like that. Yes. Yeah. About the rec why do people like that easily keep finding the same kind the of same men kind or women? Of men. So but, does it mean it's not the same kind of men and women, but sometimes the victims, or if I can put it, yes. create them like that? They create them like that. You have, you've set a foundation, <laughs> wow. you understand, upon which people build. So you are overextending. Look, it is human nature mm. 
even among siblings, institutions, mm. you be doing somebody's work for them, they'll start to feel that it is your job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So a sense yeah. of entitlement built in the other person, which makes them treat you in this way. And they don't even see anything wrong with it because that is what you created from the beginning. Mm. So when now you are becoming empowered and you are complaining, they are saying, ah, why are you complaining now? This is what you, you started with yeah. and now you are trying to change the sequence. Why? Yeah. And that's where the physical or like acts of cohesion, mm. not directly, start so that they can get you to do how you've always been. So that is, you become almost abusable if your self-worth has, is not managed. So, so Doc, is there also not the risk of, I'm just imagining somebody listening right now mm -hmm. and saying, Okay, so now I'm going to stand my ground. Yes. Creating the extreme of people now becoming too difficult in their relationship. Self-worth is not about being difficult. Okay. Self-worth is knowing your value. Knowing mm. your value. And if you set your value, you, you see, if you have a value statement, it's, nothing will change the value. For example, I have a value that rest is rest. When it's time to rest... <laughs> I envy that one. <laughs> Nothing will happen. If you call me, say, if I will not mind you. That's my value statement. Mm. You can't, there's no way I can redefine this value mm. statement. Mm. You get what I mean? Mm. And it's not me being difficult. Mm. If you set values for yourself, values also come with certain boundaries. Mm. And when you set those boundaries, what seems to happen is, in the beginning, it's difficult for people. Mm. But once they come to accept, they even admire you. Mm. Wow. See, this guy there, Charlie, Principle. this thing there, you'll mm. never do. Mm. That is a boundary. Mm. And it shows the value they have in you. Look, if you don't know your self-worth, somebody will tell you your self-worth. That's true. So if you don't know your own value, I will now tell you what your value is in my eyes. Mm. But if you know your value, somebody should not be, nobody will, if, look, look at these, uh, there are people, even when you are going to them, you are saying, hey, this person did, because uh, we have to dress well, we have to. Sure Why do you think you do that? Mm. It's because you know their value. value. Mm. That's it. And you have a positive value about yourself, people will see because you radiate that energy. But if your value system does not tie in with your self worth, we walk over you. It's human nature. It's not, it's not a, there are people who are bad like that. No, 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 no. That's not what it is. We want the easy way out. We want the maximum mm. return. So if I can bully my way to get what I want. So you are creating that. Unconsciously, mm. I will do it. Wow. It's just like going to look for a job. Absolutely. How much do you want to be paid? Anything. Anything. <laughs> you see? Anything. Come for 10 And for the business who wants to manage profit, ah. they of course be They'll down. give you anything. So much later when you now realize that they uh, are using every, you. Everybody around you is any more than you. Absolutely. <laughs> So it's all about value. Wow. I want to ask this question. What should be the do's and the don'ts mm -hmm. when you are going through a divorce process? Hmm. The, the first one is, is easy to say but very difficult to do, <laughs> which is avoid making any significant life decisions during periods like that. You see, during transitions, what mm. we find is people lose their logical selves. Okay. And your logical selves allow you to process pros, cons, looks at um, what are the possible consequences that will come from this behavior. And a lot of people become reactionary. Mm. Now, this is the interesting thing. This part of the brain is what we use to think. Okay. And there's a part of the brain here which only is implicated in danger and emotions. Mm. And when we are in situations like this, mm. this one goes to bed, this one takes precedence. This one goes, it to, goes bed. to bed. It becomes impaired. Wow. And then the reactive or impulsive part of your brain takes precedence. So everything you do, sorry, not everything, most of the things that you do, if, you are not, if you don't have the best guides and counsel, is that you are reacting. Mm. So this, I will not do it. And it's not even a big deal. So people may be asking for, I want to be able to visit my children. I will never do it. I want to teach you a lesson. What you're actually doing is you are being reactive. And the reaction means the other person can also become what? Reactive. Mm -hmm. I've witnessed a number of scenarios where there's a divorce that's about to happen. 
one person is making demand i want this i want this and the other partner says no problem you can have it and just by that fact the other person says ah, why why do i even want to leave this person when i'm demanding all these things they say if it makes you happy take it and go and it allows them to come back to the table to discuss what the challenges are and when you are reactionary you will not see it because something in, that may be in your domain to give you say i will not give it because you also just want to show True. so that's one thing you have to look at the second thing i tell a lot of people is be careful about the people who are giving you counsel mm. okay because so important i found that when somebody going through a bad relationship is taking counsel from somebody who's been through another bad relationship okay it's very chaotic okay because the person is not just advising you they are living their reality, reality. and so they are reacting how they would have reacted not an objective reaction of have you done this have you done he's bad she's bad leave is the way that this will happen so i always tell people like when you're going through periods like that be very cautious of it now also remember that beyond that individual that you have a challenge with there are dozens of people around them who have become a part of you as a result of association with them yeah. and severing the bond yeah. may also implicate yeah. the people and how yeah. you choose to deal with it yeah. is also important yeah. Avoid bad mouthing the person avoid you are leaving. Avoid, avoid yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Wicked person. Avoid it. What those things also do to you is they embitter you. Mm. So it takes you back to square one. It takes you back to square one. They make you bitter. Acknowledging that there was a time that was great. But these are the things that happen. And my value does not subscribe to this. So this is where we end the transaction. Every relationship is a, is a, is a transaction. Yeah, but it's a transaction of the heart and mind. You understand? <laughs> now I say, oh, the ATM is not giving me the right limit. So I choose to go to another place. But it's not Fidelity ATM. Fidelity ATM. <laughs> <laughs> Please, your bank is not doing anything for me. It's not sponsoring me. Oh, we'll so, surprise you. <laughs> we'll take this place orange very soon. <laughs> Don't come and advertise your, your bank on my show. So, <laughs> Those will be the top things that mm. I, I tell people. Mm. The things you should actually do mm. is that get close to people. Social support is important. Start new routines. The routines fill the voids that have been created by the separation. Okay. And even if there were routines that you used to do together, modifying that routine gives you a sense of accomplishment mm. that I am doing it on my own by myself and then get help also those are do's get help from a professional if you are confused about anything there's one amazing thing about seeing a professional they typically don't know you anywhere okay they don't have what benefit is it to them okay mm. for you to be married mm. or not, not to, to be, be married, married. Mm. Okay. so they can tell you the most objective things mm. and more importantly you are paying them to tell you the honest truth Mm. See, when, when you have friends and family, they mean well. Sometimes they worry about, if I say this, it might unsettle him or her further. So, you know, we are diplomatic. Mm. Your counselor will not be diplomatic. They will tell you as it is because that's the re it's their obligation to be honest with you. Mm. And those things allow you to look into the mirror and understand context much better than anything else. I want to now move to people who lost a spouse. Mm. We've spoken a lot about divorces. People who lost a spouse. How do they deal with loneliness? Mm. Good question again. There are many ways. Um, they also deal with their pain. Okay. Then let's tackle the pain first. Okay, let's tackle the so, pain first. So, like in every change, mm -hmm. I mentioned, there's a sense of 
uh, a compromise of safety, mm. a loss of control. Mm. That's what usually happens mm. when there's a change. Mm. And loss of a loved one mm. is one of that. Mm. Now, in my experience working with people, one thing I've noticed is among Christians, mm. and I can say that because I'm also Christian, mm. the belief of one day mm. we'll meet them again mm. always seems to be a great avenue for them to feel some sense of calm mm. that, you know, the person mm. is gone, but mm. I one will. One day I good. might. Among people who don't have a religious belief, okay. it's very difficult okay. because it's eternal. For them, okay. there it's is gone no forever. way where our paths will ever cross. Now, I've worked with people who have been in a committed relation and lost their partner. And every time they even try to give themselves permission to go back there, they feel like they are betraying oh. their partner. They feel they are betraying the partner. Wow. And that's really huge on the mind. Okay. And it comes back to providing context. Now, the thing I normally ask people that does the magic is, if your partner were here listening to what you were saying, what do you think he or she's response would be? Your partner wants you to be happy. Your partner wants you to thrive. Your partner wants you to get help. Wouldn't they have? And that starts to make them realize, oh, wow, maybe I should give myself good. In the loss of a loved one to death, it's not just about the emotions of death, but it's also the emotions surrounding the broken heart of the loved one. Okay. And all the similarly back to the same routines mm. that they used to have together, the plans mm. they had envisioned mm. to do together, mm. that did not go on. Mm. Now, I've seen how people can transition mm. some of these into amazing things. Okay. Like uh, somebody's partner dies and then they open a memorial fund. So their future plans have not halted okay so their memory lives on even though the person is not around why do we read tributes okay. during funerals okay we are creating the last testament of the person wow and we are changing the perceptions about that person okay i have not gone to a funeral where i've had a tribute that was derogatory <laughs> i don't know if you have not at all and you notice that once you read the tribute you let people know they are gone. But the memory that it leaves with you is powerful and positive. That's what usually happens. And it's the same thing I tell people when they've lost a loved one. I say, tell me about your partner. But tell me in the most positive of ways, for the fondest of memories. And as you do that, you get them to feel calmer about the person. Should they ever go into a relationship or not, it's a personal decision. It comes back from the issues of age. It comes back in social dynamics. Like I had um, a lady who said, I don't want to get into another relationship because I have five children. I don't want any man coming into the relationship to unsettle them in any way because of issues of, she had a, a cousin whose children had been maltreated by another partner. It's like, I don't want that. I said, it's your personal choice. So far as it is not you thinking directly that if I'm getting into another relationship, I'm, I'm betraying my partner. Mm. But it's just, I feel more at peace now. I think at this point, I want to focus on my children and help them thrive. Those are people's decisions to make. And there is nothing like forcing anybody. But I do know that everybody is hardwired to connect. So at some point, you want to connect with someone. And if that moment comes, helping them to address the possible challenges and the things they can do to safeguard their emotions and mental health becomes necessary. So, <laughs> how do they deal with loneliness? Okay, in our part of the world, it's even easier. We have many social agents okay. that can you know, occupy some okay. of that void that's okay. been created. The church is one of them. Okay, I like so, that. Yes, the church is one of them. I like um, that. Different groups and all of that seems to foster a sense like of um, um, community mm. among them. Mm. Now, if you have children, that's also a sense okay. of community. Um, engaging in new activities. Okay. Now, the human brain 
is more stimulated when it's starting something new. Mm. And that's why in the beginning of everything, there's huge motivation. Okay. And at some point, it dwindles down. Mm. So if you start a new activity, and by God's grace, you enjoy it, mm. what you're doing is you're occupying your time also mm. so that your mind consistently is not ruminating mm. about the person. Mm. So we keep saying, first of all, process the raw emotion. Write about your pain speak about your pain that's the venting out process number two which is starting to thrive is recognizing that before the person you were an individual and you were amazing and you were thriving and you could do things and you came together and you did amazing things now they are not there and you have to do something again which is re-identify who you used to be and that comes back to activity it's all about engaging because once you are not engaging, your brain will be ruminating. And once it ruminates, you feel sad. And the sadness drops down the way the brain even releases feel-good chemicals in the body. And that can implicate physical health concerns. Dr. Seth, I know we deal with pain differently. Yes. But sometimes, don't you think that after the loss of a spouse through death don't you think that the pain is more judgmental in other words oh I should have done this I should have loved him more I should have loved him more oh I should have done this for my mom I should have. sometimes don't you think that it happens so this is me assuming that all things being equal, okay. this was a great and thriving relationship. Okay. So depending on what the relationship was like, whether mm. it was great and thriving mm. or problematic, mm. the reactions are also very different. Okay. Now, people feel this way. So I always tell people, look, if you have something to do for someone, do it now. Do it now. Mm. Because a lot of people... Reverend Chiva, mm. if you have something to do yeah. for me, do it now. No. We'll surprise you plenty. <laughs> if you have something to do for <laughs> Dr. Dr. Seth, do it now. <laughs> mm. Please, those who want to support family life eh? series, do, it, do now. it now. Do it now. <laughs> Don't wait. When family series is not there again. Mm. Family life is not there. He said, ah, I should have sponsored. I Maybe to. I should have paid some air time. Maybe mm. I should have. Good. And so that comes to the issue of closure. Okay. You know, see, a lot of people struggle because they didn't have closure. They were at loggerheads with the person. Okay. Um, they betrayed the person in a way. Okay. They lied to the person. Okay. They, they didn't do it. So that's the closure component. Mm. Now, how do we deal with closure? Mm. I tell people, write a letter and let it start like this. If this person were here today, this is what I would tell them. Mm. Wow. Because what it is is, there are a lot of things that you cannot tell everybody. Okay. Because if you do, you feel like people will judge you. Okay. But it's still eating you up. Okay. Maybe you were seen as hard man and then your partner passes, but you cared about them deeply. I say, tell them, if they were here today, mm. what would you tell them? I want you to wow. say it. By verbalizing it, it becomes real in the mind. And it gives you some level of closure that reduces the pain of that concept of eternity. Now, with Christians, thankfully, whenever you, you give the, uh, the example of what we understand by death, that they are just asleep, mm. and one day we'll meet them again, mm then people feel, ah, okay, mm. so it's not mm. over, over. Mm. So whatever pain I feel is temporal. Okay. There's one day that things, okay. and for some people, it even spares them on to say, I'm going to work harder on my Christian race mm. so that one day I can mm. reconnect mm. with. So it can be okay. a myriad of things based on the circumstances that existed within the relationship. Hello, people of God. This is Reverend Papa, and I'd like to specially invite you this and every Friday to prayer, miracle, and prophetic service right here, Royal House Chapel, every Friday. We are lifting up prayer. It's a time of worship. It's a time of the prophetic. You don't want to miss out at all. I will be there. 
with other sons of the apostle general and it's going to be a wonderful time in the presence of God. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing but by prayer and supplication lift up unto God. Join me this and every Friday. It's prayer, prophetic, worship and a wonderful time with miracles. 6 p.m. every Friday. I'll see you there. God bless you. On Valentine's Day, I brought three people, two ladies and one gentleman. Reverend Agri, his story was um, not divorce, not coming out of a painful relationship, but his story was death, where his wife was going to deliver, died, lost the baby too. Unfortunately, they lost their first child. And then they were all excited. The woman got pregnant again, was going to deliver. Unfortunately, nurses and doctors were on strike Ooh. that season. Went into a private hospital, and then that was it. According to him, he had never drank his life before. But when his wife died, he found himself among friends. Supposed support so systems. Supposedly <laughs> friends who were supposed to comfort him, led him into alcoholism. He began to drink. Hmm. How should a person like that deal with their pain you can't do away with pain that's one thing we have to understand we, we have to do away, away with, with pain. pain we have to embrace the fact that in life things will not always be smooth mm. you're always going to hit a hard patch now from a psychological perspective it might interest you to know that the more pain the more challenges you deal with mm. the more resilient you become and mm. resilience is your ability to thrive mm even when you are going through adversity. So adversities come, but you get through it. Mm. Now, we've also found that a lot of people who go through trauma and you know, painful life circumstances, mm. the part of their brain that allows for survival mm. is bigger and stronger mm. than most other people. Mm. So it, it just presupposes the fact that life is full of challenges. Mm. When they come, mm. the way we handle them mm. determines how the next one is going to be for us. But generally speaking, the more exposed you are to the challenge, mm. the better you are able to mm. cope. Mm. As with every transition, mm. first thing you have to do is to verbalize it, vent it out. That's the first thing. Like second thing, write it. Write it or, or speak it, it, verbalize it. The second thing you have to do is identify the routines. Okay. So you talked about change change the environment yeah. when things are too routine automatically your brain also picks on them and uses them as a uh, retrieval points to remember mm. certain mm. things so as you are doing that mm. you are also finding avenues to to dull mm. the association mm. within the mind mm. and the third one i always tell people especially during losses you have to work it out, work it out. you feel pain also within your mood so when your mood dulls out, okay. it affects how long you stay mm. within that mm. process. However, if you're physically active, mm. the activity mm. reduces the, e the effect of mm. those mm. feel dull mm. chemicals mm. within the body. And once you're active, you're active because things are normal. Okay. When you are sad, when you are sick, you become dull. Yeah. But when you work it out, you tell your brain that all is well. Yeah. And it releases those feel good chemicals which could give you the same relief that alcohol might give mm. you temporarily, mm. but this one without side effects. Mm. Wow. So as you mentioned alcohol, alcohol, it will only numb your pain for a certain period of time. And then you need more alcohol just to feel fit. Wow. That's where the challenge is. 
But Dr. Seth said something that I love so much. The power of the church. Yeah. Yeah. The power of the church. Yeah. My darling, if you are going through pain, if you are going through hurts, bitterness, unforgiveness, if you don't have a church, my darling, get yourself a church. Within the church, get yourself involved in a group. As you come to church and you sing, especially for us in the charismatic churches, you dance, worship time, praises time, prayer time, the word. In a place like Royal House, they say, say this to this person. As you continue to say it and say it and say it, my darling, by the time you realize, you don't know where your pain has got into. According to Reverend Agri, he found solace in Royal House Chapel. At the time he was drinking, he hadn't joined Royal House Chapel, but he was introduced to Royal House Chapel by hearing the word, by the men's ministry, by the ushering department, by the groups he joined. By the time he realized he was healed and he had found love again. Um, we heard Dick and Alice's testimony that when she broke up, the boyfriend left and she thought she was going to die or enter into the psychiatric hospital. She found herself in Royal House Chapel. Within Royal House Chapel, she got so busy in groups, out of the groups, she got healed. Pastor Jifa mentioned the same thing. Got divorced in Royal House Chapel. There was a time she said to herself that today is going to be my last time in church. I'm not going to come again. Some way, somehow, God went to a miracle, found an angel, and the angel said to her, the angel didn't even know what she was saying, but the angel said to her, in the same place where you were disgraced, mm. in the same place where you, you went through divorce, in the same place that you went through the painful disgrace, in that same place, God will bring you laughter. In that same place, God will bring you honor. Mm. In that same place, you will find love again. My darling, if you don't belong to any church, get a church. I invite you to Royal House Chapel. Well, you can go to any church, but for me, Royal House Chapel is the only place I know. If you belong to a church, praise God, get involved. But if you don't belong to any church, I invite you into Royal House Chapel. Come, find a home, find a new partner, find a new family, start everything again. And by the time you realize, You'll be like Reverend Agri. You'll be like Deacon Alice. You'll be like uh, Pastor Jifa. Sitting on family life, sharing your story one more time. Co-host, I don't know if you have any question before we call just, it. Just like you've said, um, the church is a very strong mechanism and Royal House is a place that you can take advantage. And uh, mommy said, if you are not going to church, she recommends Royal House. Even if you are going to other churches and you still want a place to fellowship, for instance, the Royal Ladies at 30 celebration is ongoing now. Many events, many activities every month. You want to be a part of it. Come and network. Come and be a part of some of the services, the activities, the give backs, the, the, the camping. It, it creates that level of involvement and, and, and solution for you. Um, the World Movers Generation under the auspices of the Apostle General. Now, every, um, once every month, we have the Movers Arise service, Saturdays, at um, uh, between 4 to 7 p.m. You can get your adolescents, your teens, young people to join. Um, if you're a young person yourself listening to us, we want you to be involved. The first one is on the 23rd of March, the 23rd of March at the Oil Dome. 
the Movers Arise service with the Apostle General. It is full Movers service, full excitement, choreography, dance, worship, praise, word, networking. Um, so you, 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 you can never get bored in Royal House Chapel and for whatever it is, you get involved and the Lord will be your solution and you also have the opportunity to deal with every issue that you are going through. So we will be expecting you, we'll be willing to have you and I will personally be there to welcome you. Mommy, over to you. Um, Doug, one thing we haven't spoken about is the people that enter into the lives of people who have gone through pain. For instance, somebody went through divorce, somebody went through a breakup, and you are coming into the person's life. What do we, what do you have to do? I would say that it's not about the person who is coming alone. Okay. But it's about the person who is also there I mean, it's a union. Every relationship okay. has to do with two people. Okay. And like I said earlier, the effects of that past relationship mm -hmm. has altered you somehow. Mm. But to, to uh, remedy it, mm. it's about building your self-worth. Okay. It's about building your value. Okay. Whoever comes in, seeing your value yeah. and they are also coming in because you already see your value That's right. so don't disappoint them by changing mm. it oh, okay. don't mm. disappoint them by being overly this guy's got to work mm. so you are overdoing mm. it will rather change the circumstances okay. the knowledge of the person's been through something mm. is always important to mm. know mm. because once you know it sort of orients you. Now, there are, mm. there, are, there are things that people will do which are unconscious, mm. which is maybe that they become paranoid. The least thing is they fear that yeah. something bad is yeah. about to happen. Yeah. If yeah. you are going to somebody's life mm. who's been through a thing like that, mm. it must be at the back of your mind yeah. that their survival system has been compromised. Mm -hmm. okay. Their sense of safety has mm. been compromised. Okay. So as you go there, you are going to have to now build their sense mm. of safety again. Mm. So challenges may come. But mm. if it does, the mm. approach you take mm. to help them is what makes them recognize, mm. ah, okay, this person is in for mm. the long haul. Mm. I've given this example before. I say when people are about to get married, mm. about two, three weeks to the time of the wedding, mm. there's a lot of fights. Wow. They'll fight about everything and, and anything, like who will sit here, what food will come. What, what color. What color. What, those what music to match. Exactly. It. <laughs> now... What I understand by all those things mm. is, it's not that that is not important to them. But suddenly I realize, once I get married, hey, I can't do these things again. No. Okay. Hey, now I can't do this. Hey, now I can't do this. And what it is, is I'm giving all that aspect of my life my liberties. to my wife. Mm. That's what it is in my all. Mm. Or you are giving it to your husband. Mm. So then now I start to wonder, are they worth it? So these fights we have are wow. test of safety. So as you, you test them and still you're able to resolve it, past, then you're like, oh, okay, we'll it's fine. Fine. We'll be fine. And then people wow. going. But you notice people fight hard to a few days. They, we want to cancel the wedding. And you ask yourself, what is it really? It and really it's, it's not about any huge thing, but little things about how you should have met my mom and you didn't come and it's disrespectful. It's people just trying to find their safety again. Okay. Because they're about to lose it. There's a chain that's coming, and it's perceived as our safety is being taken away. And those are interesting. But my final word is that, listen, every human love is conditional. The only love that's unconditional is God's love. Of course, love. But human beings are hardwired to connect. I like that. Connect. Every human love, love is, conditional. is conditional. You have to give me something in return. Something you have to give me. God's love is unconditional. And whenever you connect with somebody, remember that because the love is conditional, you have an obligation towards each other. Mm. Doc, now you're making it hard for boys to propose. Because they go and propose <laughs> unconditional love. I, now, now you're making it hard for them to... Not lie. Yeah, There's nothing like unconditional love with you. No, no, no. Relax for boys. Relax for boys. <laughs> wow. So, Doc, I'm back to the, the same question mm. before we close for the day. Mm. I am entering into a relationship with somebody who is hurt, somebody who is bitter, somebody who's gone through 
a past painful relationship. Betrayals. Somebody who's gone through betrayals. What can I do as an individual to put the person back on their feet? What can I do to help the person heal and recover? Good. Sometimes we think that, oh yes, I'm entering into the relationship. Oh, the person divorced two years ago. The person's husband died five years ago. But what we do not know, like you're saying, it's still real. It's still real. Yes. What can we do as, as a current partners or people who are entering into the relationship mm -hmm. to okay. help them? Good. So you see, I talked about awareness. Okay. Awareness is understanding where the person was, where they are now, okay. what it means for you, okay. and what reactions are possible to come okay. out of the relationship. Mm. You see, sometimes mm. when um, somebody's come out from a place and they don't want to go again, mm. the pressure is on the person who is coming to take them away. Yeah. To say, I would never do that to you. Okay. I would never, okay. you know, you do all these things to okay. give them a sense of safety. Okay. But reality is, actions speak louder than words. Okay. If you want somebody to feel comfortable, it's your actions that okay. you show. Okay. There is no amount of words that you tell somebody for them to feel comfortable. Okay. It's only the actions that mm. you show. Mm. In the same light, be careful okay. that you don't become this abused. Okay. So mm. I may be going into a relationship with somebody who went to an abusive relationship. Okay. And I'm trying so hard. Look, I love you. I promise I will never hurt you. And every day you are trying. So, for example, the least thing, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry. You are also overextending. Oh. And before long, they start to take advantage of, of you. you. Okay. So I tell people, be yourself. Be yourself. Okay? If you give me a version of you mm. that I fall in love with mm. and you want to change it, mm. there's no way I can accept it. And that's the basis of many romantic relationship challenges. Okay. That in the beginning, so Man Marita, you know, yeah. you hear it in counseling. Mm -hmm. We used to do this together. Yeah. We don't yeah. do it again. Yeah. We used to do this. Yeah. That was a version of yourself that you did okay. what? That you gave. Mm. And now you've taken it away. You say, mm. after election, mm. no campaign. Mm. Breach, <laughs> breach, breach of contract. <laughs> you understand? So always yeah. be yourself. Self. Be genuine and consistent with the person. So the person knows what they are signing up for. Rather than make me laugh. and genuinely in the beginning, everybody goes all out because yes, you are trying to get the person to be on your radar mm. or for you to be on the person's mm. radar. But within that, must be interspersed with a genuineness mm. and honesty of what I can give and what I cannot give, or else you are setting yourself up for disaster. But, mommy, when I was um, going after my wife then while she was in school, I wasn't any match. And when I'm going to visit her, and she says, oh, um, what can I get you? And she says, get me this, and I'm buying the food. I could afford one pack, but I knew she had a roommate. I can't buy for her and buy for the roommate. So when I buy, buy the one pack, when we get there, I call her, we all sit down, we eat. <laughs> 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 I will eat that. <laughs> There was no extra expectation. <laughs> so the day that I'm able to bring two packs, Charlie, I'm a big man. Awesome. I'm a big awesome. man. So awesome. yeah. I, like, I like the fact that you have yeah. to be yourself. But yeah, uh, yeah. just a follow-up um, about the partner who is now coming into a relationship with a person who is going through bitterness or something. How much of the background should you know? It depends on how much you can stomach. Mm. That's the reality. There are partners where I say, and as much as you can, you've got to keep some of the information away. Mm. It's unnecessary in the context. Mm. I am open to full disclosure, okay. but there are some people who are overly sensitive mm. that if they did that. So when you, when you look at many relationships, people judge their partners yeah. based on their ex-partners. Yeah. So there's a woman who is asking the partner, so between me and her, mm. who is better? Mm. between who cooks mm. better, who mm. does this better. Mm. It's based on their own vulnerability. Okay. And for such a person, it might be good for you to just be diplomatic in your responses, knowing that they will, they will over-process mm. what it is. Mm. There are some people who have the stomach to listen. Mm. They will hear everything. In fact, they will make jokes out of it. Mm. 
So it depends on, it, it has to do with knowing your partner mm. and knowing what boundaries mm. you want to set in terms of that. Now, look at it this way also. There are people who say, I don't want to talk about my past. Yeah. I don't want it. Yeah. It is their right to okay. do so. Okay. They don't feel they want to discuss it. There's, okay. there's nothing wrong with it because it unsettles them. Okay. Maybe they might explain to you, it unsettles me. Okay. I don't want to be in the shadow of the past. It's respectable and honor it. After all, you are not there because of their ex-partner. You, you came because you saw certain attributes about them in the present that you liked. So you don't have to go into the past mm -hmm. with them if they don't want to. Okay. If you insist, I always say, get a professional okay. to mediate that okay. interaction as they help to contextualize so many things so it doesn't get out of balance. Mommy, you would have to bring Dr. Seth back. The reason I'm saying this is we have lots of questions coming wow. through. Lots of questions. And keep them coming, plus 233-200-515253. Plus 233-200-515253. Mommy will have the headache of deciding how we deal with them. Wow. <laughs> so please, let your questions keep coming. We are going to bring Dr. Seth back and all he'll be doing is to answer your questions. Even with me, I kept fidgeting with my <laughs> phone because people were yeah. kept yeah. asking questions. So please, what we wanted to do was to deal with all the issues and then, and the next time we bring Dr. Seth, I don't know if to be next week, I don't know when, but we are going, certainly going to bring him back and he's going to answer all your questions. I. I know that bringing Dr. Seth here, me, myself, I knew I was bringing my, I was giving myself trouble because <laughs> I know people have issues, mm. issues with their ex, mm. issues with forgiveness, issues with bitterness. Issues with the economy. Issues, issues with what? <laughs> the economy. economy. <laughs> issues with the economy. <laughs> issues with, will I ever forget? Um, mm. Valentine's Day, yeah. when we finished, so many people came to me. Mm. Mommy, do you think I would ever, I, I would, I would ever forget my pain? Mm. Mm. Do, do you ever think, mm. you know? So we'll leave these questions to Dr. Seth to answer. But Dr. Seth, in closing, I want you to tell us how important is therapy to the individual when you are going through divorce, when you are going through um, separation, separation. you are going through a breakup. Um, how important people in this part of the world, we don't know how important therapy is. Yes. You know, how important is it? So like I said earlier, yeah. um, a therapist has an obligation to be honest with you. Mm. And they're also trained to identify patterns and associations mm. that they bring to the fore for mm. discussion. Mm. If not for anything, mm they can be able to make you recognize mm. why you are feeling the way you are feeling. Mm. Because it's not just the break. I'll okay. give you this example. Mm. Two people are in a romantic relationship. Mm. They are poles apart, like mm. different countries. Mm. 10 years, they've never seen each mm. other. One day, one person says, it's over. Mm. And the other person is in a deep sense of loss. Mm. Why? Those are the kinds of questions we answer. So it's not just about the physical. But it's the routines that we have built. It's the connections that we've built beyond. Mm. And helping people to recognize mm. and process them mm. is what allows them to move on. So somebody may leave a partner by comparing his old partner with his new partner okay. all the time. That's something that therapy helps the person okay. to address. Okay. So if somebody's going through divorce, I know some people would say, let me wait. After the divorce, after everything is completed, I go through therapy to have a, a clean start. Do you recommend that or start, ther whilst start, start therapy the moment you decide to go through a divorce? Because a divorce is a very significant transition. So start therapy early. It will help you to be in a better place as you even go through the process, especially when you have children together. I always say it's more important to look at how we can still live amicably. Yes, the union did not work, but we're not enemies. And therapy can help you uncover 
or look on the brighter side of some of the things. Help you to set boundaries, help you to build value. So many things. If there's anything you want us to know before we close the curtain. That's why I said, Reverend, I said, <laughs> human love is conditional. <laughs> it is transactional. Something must come with something. Um, it's important to realize that in every relationship, okay, at some point, one partner will be doing more than the other. Mm -hmm. At some point, one partner will do more than the mm -hmm. other. But in teamwork, 100% mm -hmm. is what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm giving 1%, mm -hmm. and my wife is giving 99, mm -hmm. without my 1%, mm -hmm. the wholeness will not be recognized. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Don't run into a place where you start to say, I'm doing all of this. Mm -hmm. It's not true. In teamwork, there are days where one person will outshine everybody else. But the whole team is important in that. And in our quest to find love, which is God-given and a natural human uh, uh, instinct to connect, let's always realize that as we connect, we must also look at the things that may be stumbling blocks to it thriving and start to deal with them even before we get there. Thank you. Who? I hope you've enjoyed, Dr. Seth. I have... And I, I know my co-host has. Hey. He's enjoyed more than I, I have. I, I'm in a master class. You are in a I'm master in, class. You are doing class. masters. Yeah. Hey, the last time we did first degree. We did first degree. This now time is. Masters. <laughs> then soon PhD. PhD. <laughs> Doctor said we want to say a very big thank you to you. Yeah, we so. can never get tired of your presence. Mm -hmm. By grace. Um, with us in family life, you've always been. You've always been a blessing. Yeah. I, there has never been a day that you've been here that I have been disappointed. Yeah, great. I don't know if there's yeah. ever going to be a day. Always Amen. something but new to learn. Pardon? Always something new to learn. Every time Everything. there's something new to learn. And like I said, um, I want to throw an open invitation again. <laughs> I know you are busy, but looking at our phones, the number of questions that have come in. We are certainly going to I'll invite. Oh! <laughs> so to everybody, to my team, yeah. what can I do without you? Mm. My co-host, thank you. Mm. To my head of media, uh, Reverend Eddie. Eddie. Brian. Do I insult him small yeah. before I... We'll manage him small. We'll manage yeah. him small. He's, because he's not always here with us, but today <laughs> he's here. We want to say a very big thank you and um, to everybody, I can't mm. mention everybody's name. Adam, oh, Yay. you know I love you. Joy Daddy. <laughs> Joy Daddy, I love you. Everybody with us here, I love you. And I say a very big thank you to each one of you. Mm. And to everybody that makes family life a success. Mm. Listening to us, mm -hmm. I say thank you. We will make a date, same day, same time next week. I don't know what we are doing next week. If Dr. Seth is not busy, we are going to bring him on to answer our questions. But we'll see what happens to him during the week. Sorry. Thank you so much. Take very good care of yourself. Deal with your bitterness. Deal with your pain. Deal with your loss. But I have learned something today that we shouldn't forget it. Forgive, but don't forget. God bless you and have a good night.